In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase, what makes someone tick. When we talk about what makes someone tick in English, we talk about what makes them do the things they do, or what makes them want to do the things that they do. Sometimes it's interesting to try and figure out what makes someone tick. Sometimes when you see people in public at the mall or somewhere else, and they're doing strange things, you wonder to yourself, what makes that person tick? I think this might come from a clock, like a clock ticks. And we know that a clock ticks because it has a mechanism inside. And I think when people do strange or odd things, we sometimes wonder what makes them tick. The other phrase I wanted to teach you today is the phrase to tick someone off. When you tick someone off, it means you make them angry. Um, sometimes when I come home late, I'm really loud and it can tick Jen off. Sometimes my kids go out at night and they come home really late and they're really loud when they come in. And then when I'm laying in bed trying to sleep, I wake up and then I'm ticked off. So when you tick someone off, it means you do something that makes them annoyed or makes them angry. Sometimes people do the strangest things and sometimes it can tick other people off. So to review, when you talk about what makes someone tick, you're talking about what makes them do what they do. It means you're trying to understand what they're thinking about when they decide to do certain things. And when you tick someone off, it simply means that you are making them angry or annoyed. I try really hard with my English lessons to not tick people off. I don't ever want to tick people off on this channel. I think the best way to teach English is to be happy, don't do anything controversial, uh, and make sure that people are enjoying learning the language. But hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This comment is from Xavier, and Xavier says, definitely learning English can be exasperating, especially when you don't know a word and trying to carry on with the conversation, you end up making up a kind of new English, Spanglish in my case. And my response is this, I do this quite a bit when I'm speaking French. Sometimes my speaking par partner gives me a funny look and says, that's not a word. I think everyone who is learning to speak a language has done this in the past. They have made up words um, as they're trying to speak the language. They kind of mix together a word from their own language and they make it sound kind of English, or in my case, I make it sound as French as possible. Um, and then hopefully you get away with it. Sometimes the person you're talking to will understand, uh, but sometimes, like I said, with my speaking partner, uh, they will just look at you and smile uh, and uh, kind of let you know that you've made a mistake. Sorry that I am so close to the camera today. I don't know if you've realized this, but I have bought a new camera and I'm waiting for a better lens to come. The camera's also a little heavier than my last camera. Um, and so I'm shooting right now, if you understand photography, using a 24 millimeter lens. Um, and I'm waiting for a 14 millimeter lens, which gives you a much better view of what's behind me uh, and what is behind me. Well, I did tell you I would show you the peony patch once it started to bloom. You can see that the peonies are gorgeous. Now we have cut most of these and most of these have been sold but we usually leave a few to slowly open because we just like to have something nice to look at as well. Anyways, Bob the Canadian here using a new camera. I hope this went well. I hope everything uh, recorded perfectly and I'll see you in a couple days with another short English lesson. Bye.